They don't be afraid. Let me tell you, the spirit of fear will keep you from getting what God got for you, and it will also keep you from moving in the direction that you should be going. Fathers, I'm speaking to you. There is no need to be fearful now. It is to trust God. But they were terrified and frightened. And suppose that they had seen a spirit. In our common day, we would say they were afraid that they had seen a ghost. Hallelujah. I want to say it, this is almost common in the world in which we live. When the Lord is speaking and when he's talking, it always seems that they are afraid of something or it is a ghost. But the Bible said they thought it was a spirit and that meant that they thought it was a ghost. And so he said to them, why are you so troubled? Why? He asked the question, why are you troubled? You should be walking with me. You should understand me. Bless his name. Hallelujah. You should have a, a relationship with me that when I speak, you will answer, yes, Lord. When I speak, it's hallelujah. When I speak, glory to God. It should not be a time to be terrible, uh, 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 frightened, and the Bible said they will struggle. And so it is not the time now, uh, my brothers, and especially the father, to be troubled. That you have turned your back on your own child. You have turned your back on your own children. You have not occupied the space of being a father as you should. And so the Bible said, uh, why are you uh, troubled? And, and why do you doubt? Arise, uh, doubt arise in your heart. He said, why are you confused? Hallelujah. You should have a relationship with him that would not create confusion. And so they was terrified. Their heart was not where it should be. Your, your double arising, your trouble arising, double minded and double way of thinking that you're in doubt. And so the Bible says he speaks to his disciples and he said, uh, behold my hand and my feet. He said, I want you to look at my hand and my feet. Look at the hand where they nail the nail in my hand. Look at my feet where they nail nails in my feet. My God. Can I talk to somebody out there? Especially our brothers that we're celebrating Father's Day. The card really not telling the real story about you. But I want to hopefully encourage you that it's not too late. It's not too late to become that father that you ought to be. And so the Bible told, uh, the disciples were told by Jesus, look at my hand. That has to be something that will remind you. Shana, it's what I said. That got to be something that will remind you of who you're talking to, to remind you of who you really is. My God. He said, look at my hand and my feet. That is I, myself, handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bone as you see I have. My God. So he's not expecting us, amen, to be no superman or superwoman. And brother, I'm speaking to you as a father. He's not expecting you to be a superman, but he's expecting you to recognize him. Recognize him. And when you recognize him, things begin to turn around. Uh, hallelujah. Now watch me in the name of Jesus. Uh, I want you to look back at this chapter and look at verse 28 is where I really want to focus my uh, uh, mind and my heart and the direction of this, uh, this message today. And so as they drew nigh to the village where they were going and he indicated that he would have gone farther. He would have gone a little bit further, but the Bible said they constrained him. They kept it high, God. Hallelujah. They held on to Jesus. I want to tell you, brother, whatever you do, you ought to hold on to Jesus. You ought to constrain him. He can do more and more than you can imagine. And 
told the disciples they constrained him. They talked to him, said, Don't go now. The word you're speaking is turning over in my spirit. I want to tell you today that that, that same Jesus can be held on to. That same Jesus can be talked to. That same Jesus, he can move now. But the Bible says you have to make an effort to, to constrain him. If you're somewhere, lift your hand up and tell him, Lord, I need you. If you are walking alone, tell him to walk with me. If you're in your bed sick, tell him to heal you. But you ought to constrain him. My God, the Bible said, but they constrain him, saying, abide with us. That abide means stay with us. I wish I had witnesses here to tell it all. Tell it all. I need you to stay with me. I want you to abide with me. And the Bible said they have him. For it was the end toward evening time. They said it get me late in the evening. I wish somebody at home would recognize it get late in the evening. And I need you now. My God, I need you before the sun go down. Somebody in the hospital room, you ought to tell them it get evening time. They can't get no better. So I need you now in the name of Jesus. Disciples that they constrain him, they encourage him to stay a little while longer. I don't know about you, but every once in a while, I have to tell him, Lord, don't leave me now. I need you now. And the Bible said they constrain him to stay with him a little bit longer. You're right now, Saul. You're right. 
somebody said, he sit with us now. <laughs> Something's about to happen now. He sat at the table with them. My God, thank you, Father. My God. And he took bread and he blessed it. And he broke it. And he gave it to them. Now, this is a group here. When he gave it to them, they were in doubt of who he was. I'm preaching to somebody today that have already come to the place that you don't believe that God is real. But I came to tell you on Father's Day, be that father that you need to be. He'll give you the know-how. He'll give you the resources to take care of your own child or children. I know it looks hard right now. This pandemic has stepped down a lot. But God is still able. God is still waiting. God will still stand for you. And so the Bible said that he called them to sit at the table. And the Bible said while they were sitting, that the Bible he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave to them. My God, thank you. Jesus moving in my direction. I see Jesus. 
And then they looked at that and saw where the nails had been placed. And so when you understand him and can trust him, now things get better. My God, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Now I speak to you, my God, this great Father's Day, that you will begin to be the best father that you can be. Turn to him, for he is still able to help you along the way. Turn to him. He's still able to bring the light out of darkness. Shout out. He's still able to heal bodies that are sick. He's still able to put a job in your way. Hallelujah. He's still able to bless you in good, good health. He's still able to turn that situation around. Hey. Trust in him, and the Bible will let you know we 
when your eyes is open, you will walk in the word of God and you will trust him as you go forward. May God bless you and keep you in our prayer that you will stand firm and know that Jesus is on your side. He is the Lord and he is our Savior and our soon coming King in Jesus' name. Amen.